With the official OTA release of One UI 4 rolling out and now available for the Galaxy S21 series, at the time of this recording, we just managed to get One UI 4 with Android 12 on the Galaxy S20. Hi, Ben from Sound Mobile. If you enjoy exclusive and new videos like this, then be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss any new videos on YouTube with Sound Mobile TV. Here is our overview of One UI 4 Beta with Android 12 for the Galaxy S20. Now, major disclaimer here before we go forward. If you've been following our extensive One UI 4 Beta coverage on the Galaxy S21, all the way down to the official One UI 4 coverage for the Galaxy S21, then you will feel right at home and things are not gonna be much of a surprise or look or feel much different. It's gonna be pretty much very similar on the Galaxy S20, as it was only released a year before. Secondly, we will be focusing on the core features of One UI 4 with Android 12 on the Galaxy S20. Any features not mentioned there will be the assumption that it's there from before, just like on the final build and the beta, unless stated otherwise that it is missing. That out of the way, let's run you through One UI 4 beta on the Galaxy S20. First has got to be Material U with color palette. This aesthetically is the biggest change and attraction and the foundation to Android 12, your phone. Naturally customizes menus, buttons, backgrounds, and apps throughout the whole system UI based on your wallpaper. You can even take it a step further and apply a default color palette to the native Samsung apps in One UI 4. Now we saw this showcased in beta 2 on the Galaxy S21, so it's good to see Samsung follow through here with the Galaxy S20, and this was a really highly demanded feature that people wanted to see. The level of privacy control, access, and visibility has greatly improved One UI 4 with Android 12. This all focuses around having better control and visibility and access to apps and system usage over your phone's camera, microphone location, and even a clipboard when you're copying and pasting content. What's great is that you can instantly see when an app is accessing your camera or microphone with a green dot and a toggle that will appear on the top right as an indicator, which you can then pull down and press to access to give you full visibility of what permissions are enabled for that specific app. What's even better is that you can now keep your exact location private for each app by setting an approximate tracking to give a general area of where you are or altogether just disable it. The reworked privacy dashboard even shows you a detailed look into the last 24 hours of what apps have access to your camera, mic and location at specific times, whether when you're using the app or even in the background. We stated this before, but this level of visibility, access, and control here is a massive core improvement to One UI 4 with Android 12, and we are definitely happy to see it here on the Galaxy S20. Another foundation and change to One UI 4 with Android 12 is the new widgets and interaction with the home screen. The widgets menu follows a stacked vertical arrangement, which is not only better organized and easier to see, but it also shows you how many widgets each app has, so there's no surprises or guesswork. The widgets themselves have been designed, interact better, and also show information that is easier in general to see and follow. And it has a more consistent look with One UI 4. The lock screen has also been refined with the ability to handle quick tasks without unlocking your phone, from controlling your music, checking your calendar, or capturing your best ideas. The ability to switch your audio output from your earbuds to the speakers, from the lock screen to voice recording, checking your calendar and schedule, Bigsby routines, the digital well-being, the weather, and even your alarm is a great addition of control on your lock screen without needing to unlock your phone. The camera UI sees a nice streamlined overview when using it for your pictures and videos. The scene optimizer button only appears in photo mode if there is low light or when you're scanning the document. The night mode and portrait mode settings are hidden away in the more section, but as always, you can still add these back to the main selection if you choose to do so. Gone are the pine trees used to represent the magnification of which lens or view you're using in the camera UI. Once pressed, at the bottom row of numbers will appear and the icons will be highlighted in yellow to show which magnification you're using. Video recording also starts straight away after pressing the record button, rather than previously where you had to press and release for the recording to start. What's great now is in photo mode, you can press and hold the shutter button to start recording and then further drag your finger to the lock icon to continue recording and still change between the focal lengths to the selfie and back to the rear cameras. The Pro Mode UI sees a redesign for a more streamlined look 
for easier controls. For this section, I don't have any pets to demonstrate this like before, but a portrait mode now works better with pets for both the front and the rear cameras when it comes to pets like cats and dogs. And some portrait effects can only be changed and added after you take the shot. The gallery app sees enhanced stories, which auto creates the best highlighted moments of pictures and also videos taken. And also there is easier album management as well. You can also revert your remastered pictures back at any time, even if you've saved it. Now let's look at the photo and video editor. With photos and videos, you can now add stickers and emojis for a more fun final output when you're editing your photos and videos. You can also create video collages with a mix of videos, as well as obviously pictures. You can also then, when you're editing the lighting, change the lighting of the picture if it's too dark or bright with the light balance editing feature. The new home screen widget for the calendar shows a full month and also your schedule for the day. You can also add quick events to your calendar as well, plus the ability to share your calendar with other Galaxy users. You can also recover deleted events, which are kept in the trash for up to 30 days, so much easier control there. The device care section has seen a nice UI overhaul for a much easier and quicker glance of the current state of your device when it comes to the storage, memory, battery, and device protection. The new RAM Plus feature we showcased in Beta 2 on the Galaxy S21 is here, which uses four gigabytes of internal storage to increase the system RAM output. There is still no toggle or option to disable this, which we'd love to see in a final version, but this is the same for the Galaxy S21, so we highly doubt it. Overall, the visual look of device care and how the state of your device is showcased with an emoji is a nice, friendly touch. Samsung Health also saw a nice design overhaul as well, making it nice and easier to track your exercise, sleep, food intake, and more. The four tabs at the bottom make it easier to access the home, together, fitness, and my page. You can also see a quick summary of your achievements in your my page and your general progress. There are also more food options when recording your intake and also an easier way to challenge your friends as well with invite links. If you are one to use Bixby routines, then you'll be happy to know more conditions have been added from being able to start a routine from a call or when certain notifications arrive. Enhanced processing can also be enabled with a routine and also options to connect or disconnect Bluetooth devices. Overall, you'll find less restrictions and more combinations and customizations when setting up and using your Bixby routines. With accessibility, you can now use floating buttons with key features so you have quicker access to them always. There are more eye comfort visibility options to meet your needs. And also, the extra dim feature, which is one of our favorite showcase from Beta 2 on the Galaxy S21. And you can access it as a toggle, also in the quick settings from the drop down menu as well on the Galaxy S20. You can also customize the flash notifications and there is an easier magnification window giving you more options and control. Now, wrapping things up with this overview. Features like being able to use your AI emoji as your profile picture in your contact, as well as your Samsung account, editing the sharing menu to improvements to the Samsung keyboard with grammar correction, improved dark mode on the native level and things like the new charging animation are all here on the Galaxy S20, like you saw with the S21 with our coverage. One thing that is missing is the overstretch effect when you hit the end of scrolling. Now, this effect was removed in the final beta 4 on the Galaxy S21, but with the official OTA release, we saw the return of the overstretch effect, which we expected to be the same with the Galaxy S20. Let us know in the comment section below if you've managed to get One UI Beta 4 on your S20, and what's your experience been with it so far? For the latest news in the world of Samsung Daily, be sure to visit us at sammobile.com. And also for the latest videos on YouTube with Sam Mobile TV, be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications, and we will see you next time.